Can you trust me? This is a question I've been asking myself all week since I got a comment which, amongst a few things, called my groundedness a gimmick. If you look past all the condescending sarcasm, this guy kind of has a point, and it's one I want to address today. Let's go. May of 2005, when we launched the site, we weren't really sure if this was going to work. 51 million. That's how many YouTube channels there are. That's a mind-boggling number. To help you visualize it, if you got all those channels and lined them up in a row, you'd have a big-ass line. Yeah. One billion hours of content are watched every day on this platform. Do you know how much that is? That's 114,155 years of content consumed every single day on this platform alone by the human race. There is 500 hours of content uploaded to YouTube every single minute of every single day. That means YouTube publishes more original content every three hours than the Hollywood movie industry does in a whole year. Why am I telling you this? Because I want to draw your attention to the problem that this creates. With such massive scale, with such huge amounts of content from so many different places literally flooding to YouTube from all over the world, every second of every day, how on earth is anyone meant to police it? Millions of channels making hundreds of millions of videos that are being consumed billions of times a day. Any attempt to put meaningful legislation in place is almost pointless because it's next to impossible to police. Yeah, sure, the biggest influencers in the game get put under the microscope. There was that Molly Mae giveaway calamity, where she got millions of entries on Insta, couldn't be bothered to sift through them all, so just picked a hundred from a list and then selected from one of those at random. She got fined and it was held up as an example of punishing naughty influencers for bad behaviour. So the Advertising Standards Agency had a scalp to wave in people's faces and go, look, we do our job. But she's an example of a social media personality right at the top level. On the flip side, is somebody looking at Kay's cooking? Does Turtle ASMR have our best interests at heart? Would regulators acknowledge an ordinary sausage? Is Tonsil Stone Man doing the best he can? But, and yeah, sure, sometimes he's funny, but can we trust Damien Talks Money? No. The very thing I love about YouTube creates the problem that I wish to discuss today. How many amazing, quirky, and off-the-wall talented creators do we have on this platform that would never make it past the filters of traditional media onto normal TV? And just for fun, you know, yeah. that's like, hey, yeah. you want to give me some money to produce a TV show. Like, no, it's like, oh. Anyone has a chance on this platform, but that scale and freedom also means it's down to us, the viewer, to kind of police what is good and bad content. Made all the more tricky by them getting rid of the dislike button. And more importantly, in the context of today's video, it's down to the creator to kind of set their own moral compass as to what's acceptable when it comes to the relationship between the creator and the people watching their video. Today, I want to stick a flag in the ground and tell you which way my compass points. So I can be fully transparent about how this channel is going to run going forwards, because all jokes aside, this isn't a cooking channel, is it? I'm not sat here making sausages. I'm here talking about finances and investing. And in my opinion, there isn't a niche on YouTube that has more potential to do good or damage than the finance niche. So why am I choosing to kind of have this conversation now? I just quit my job. So what essentially was a hobby or a side hustle is now becoming my main source of income, which means I'm gonna to have to make some changes to the channel in order to support myself. And I wanna kind of lay that all to bear so that you can make a decision on if that's something you still wanna be a part of. I'm gonna break this down into two categories. First of all, my approach to making money on this platform. And secondly, my approach to content going forwards, sharing with you a bit about who I am, my background, so you know who the hell you're watching each week. <laughs> You know, I do my best to reply to everyone's comments, but especially with this video, I'm gonna take the time to reply to any and all questions down below. So yeah, unleash hell in the comments section. Let's start with the money. So prior to this, the money I earned from YouTube was really just like a nice bonus on top of my day job. The last day in my day job is the end of February, at which point this has got to kind of replace that income, which is going to be no easy feat. Now, to be clear, money isn't the main focus, and it certainly isn't the reason why I left my job. I mean, sure, I want to bull hard like the best of them, Young DTM dreamed of seven figures since the womb. Just look at a gold finish on that bike. That boy's got ambition in his eyes and a turtle on his hat. Move out his way. I made the decision to leave my job so I could kind of reclaim my life back. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the schedule, but working full time as well as having a YouTube channel meant that I had to give up certain things in my life. My social life went out the window and so did going to the gym. I lost friends and gained weight. The joys. Yeah! But the fact stands that there's still people in my life that count on me to kind of feed them and support them. And making money needs to be a key consideration of mine when structuring this channel going forwards. Also, you know I like doing giveaways. And the more money I earn, the more I give away. Well done, you've just won 500 quid. Now, there's a number of ways that finance creators can make money on this platform. The first one is ad revenue. Those skippable and non-skippable ads you see before, after, and during my content. 
I have absolutely no control over the ads that are shown before, during or after my content and basically YouTube splits the cash with me that they charge those advertisers for placing the adverts there. As a rule of thumb, I'm going to earn about £8 or $10 for every thousand views and that money will hit my bank account once a month, normally about the 20, 21st, 22nd of the month and then I have to pay tax on that. How much I get depends on the amount of videos I make, the topic they are on, the performance of that video, the age and location of the people watching it and the time of year. For example, unsurprisingly, January is probably the best time for the finance niche, as that's when lots of new people start looking to invest. But it also happens to be the lowest paid time of the year. Basically, all the advertisers blew all their money in December and don't have anything to spend in January, so the ad rates drop on YouTube as a result. It's kind of like a sick joke that the busiest time of year for the finance niche is also the lowest paid part of the year. To be blunt, I just can't rely on ad revenue to support myself because it fluctuates so much throughout the year. I've earned about 18 to 19,000 pounds in ad revenue over the lifetime of this channel, which is absolutely lovely, don't get me wrong, and I'm certainly not moaning about that figure. The fact that I made 18,000 pounds basically using an iPhone in my loft with a piece of paper behind me for the majority of the channel is mind blowing, but it doesn't go anywhere near to replacing my full-time income. So I'm gonna have to consider other revenue streams, other sources of income to kind of support myself. One such way is sponsorships, which I've completely avoided on purpose until this point. And it's not like I don't get offers. Honestly, I get 10, 20 emails a day from all different types of companies asking to sponsor the channel. Some are pretty funny, they're so scammy. I mean, I'll read you one now. So this one came through on the 28th of Jan and it's supposedly from Rick Owens brand, as in the fashion designer. But if you look at the email, I mean, you know, email.cz, mm, bit moody. And the email itself is brilliant. Bonsoir. <laughs> I hope this email finds you well. I am marketing manager, hashtag AX1384. Well, I mean, I'd feel far more comfortable dealing with hashtag AX1383. I'm sorry if I sound a bit groggy today, I've got a bit of a cold. Chevy's infected! No. I mean, you get the gist. This is where the murky world of influencers kind of steps forward and the lack of policing within the space means that people can kind of do whatever they want and it's really the wild west. You as an audience have a right to know when you are being advertised to. On Insta, they have hashtag ad at the end of a post. It should be at the start in my opinion, but whatever. On YouTube, there is this button I can click on the back end that shows a banner during the video to say it's sponsored. Now a lot of creators follow the rules and tick the box, but I'm aware of creators in other niches and in the UK finance niche that don't. And basically that's really bad on them and really bad on the brand itself who could also get into trouble for not ensuring that creators declare that it's a sponsored video. But they kind of just hide behind excuses like, well, the company hasn't had any involvement in the video, so it's not really sponsored. But my thoughts on this are, if someone walks up to you in the street and gives you some cash, you're probably gonna like that person. I imagine it's the same for paid reviews. I've really battled with the whole sponsorship thing since I started the channel, because I wanna sit here and for you to know that the words coming out of my mouth are my own. I wanna say whatever I want about whoever I want on this channel. There's absolutely no way that Vanguard would have signed off a video of me getting choked out by my missus while dissecting their forecast for 2022. But I wanna make those kind of videos. I never thought I'd say that online. <laughs> so when it comes to this sponsored point, I'm gonna to need to put sponsors on the channel because it will provide stable income that I can essentially predict each month. But I'm only gonna do it under very strict criteria, which are as follows. I'll never do a sponsored review. You're never gonna see a review on this channel that's been paid for by the company that I'm reviewing. I just think there's a clear conflict there. And what is a review? A review is you going, does someone actually like this service? Is it a good service? And if I know that that person's being paid to review that product, I just don't believe what they're saying. Well, I am the second rule I'll have with sponsors on this channel is that the majority of videos on this channel will remain unsponsored. I plan to make more content as part of going full time. I'd love to get to kind of like seven to eight videos a month, but I don't need need seven or eight sponsorships every single month in order to provide stability within my life financially. In reality, if I could get two to three maximum sponsored videos a month, that would give me the freedom to kind of make the content I want to make without being a slave to the algorithm and leaning heavily into clickbait in order to kind of guarantee views. Also, out of respect to you, any video that has a sponsored segment in the middle, there'll be no mid-roll ads enabled on that video. So you're not going to have to put up with both a sponsored segment in the middle of a video and then loads of random ad breaks that YouTube keeps throwing in as well. I really really value the time that you give me and my content. The fact that you sit down every week to watch one of my videos is amazing to me. I will do everything I can to respect that time. You know why?
It was out of respect. I'm also not a very big fan of poorly integrated and badly scripted sponsored segments within the middle of videos that just break up the flow of the video. I will make them as entertaining as humanly possible. So even if you're not interested in the product that's sponsoring the video, you might just enjoy watching the advert. Any company I ever have on this channel will be a reputable business with a great product. I'll either use that product myself or I will have tested it extensively before ever putting it as a sponsor on the channel. By putting some product as a sponsor on this channel, I'm basically saying, I like this product and I take that very seriously. Almost as seriously as I take good toilet paper. I give a crap about who gives a crap. So give yourself a pat on the bum. I'm only messing. I mainly use Domino's pizza menus because there's a never ending free supply of them coming through my door on a daily basis, it seems. Next up is affiliate income. Links down below. Ah, affiliates. I both love and hate affiliate income and the money on offer for top tier finance creators within this affiliate income space is mind blowing. Andre Jick did a video on this and he is literally earning millions a year from affiliates. Now affiliates, rightly or wrongly, don't class as sponsored content because they're not directly paying for the content to be made. It's more of a I get something, you get something kind of relationship. But, and this is a big but, how many creators do you think make content about services they don't use just so they can get the affiliate income? I bet it's quite a few. So here is my approach to affiliate. I'll only ever include links in my description to services that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I'll never let the presence or absence of an affiliate scheme affect my opinion of a service. Vanguard is an example. I've got more views on Vanguard content than Vanguard have customers in the UK. There's probably a load of you watching this right now that signed up to Vanguard off the basis of one of my videos. They don't offer an affiliate scheme. If they had an affiliate scheme, I'd probably be retired right now. Yeah! I won't chop and change the links in my description to suit whatever the best affiliate scheme is at the time. It always kind of annoys me when I see large American creators at one moment pushing Weeble or Robinhood and then suddenly go into public. And I'm thinking, you're just getting a better deal with another provider, aren't you? So you've, you've moved everything and you now recommend this new app. I won't do that. I'll only ever change the links in my description to the companies that I am investing in. Now that means that I can't really take affiliate income very seriously because it just disappears. Like I said, Free Trade, Trading212, both stop their schemes, but those are the places where I invest my money at the minute, along with Vanguard who don't offer one. So, you know, I ain't earning that much affiliate. Yeah! The final source of income is subscription services like Patreon and channel memberships. Or mainly OnlyFans is more appropriate with the tone of this channel sometimes. But honestly, I'd have to pay you to watch that. And I hope the way that I present my content shows that if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. That means I wouldn't launch something like a Patreon unless I was confident that the value coming out of it to people who put money into it was more than what they were putting in each month. Now, I'd discuss the features and benefits of a Patreon if I was to launch one nearer the time with those people who were interested. I do want to clarify, though, that the absolutely no pressure from me to join any subscription services and the content on this main channel will remain 100% free throughout the lifetime of this channel. Those subscription services and models just allow content creators to make the content they want to make without needing to be a slave to the algorithm, you know, jumping into heavy clickbait and sensational content in order to get views because to be blunt that's kind of what sells. Which leads us nicely onto our next section my thoughts on content. First of all, I think it's important to give a little bit of context about my professional background and kind of where I'm coming from. So I graduated from Durham University, I got a degree in business, and then since then I've worked in financial services for about 12 years in a number of different roles, mainly focused on sales within financial services. So I've worked in debt solutions, I've sold investments, I've worked for a tax specialist, and I've also recently worked for an accountancy firm. Now, working across financial services has given me two skills, really, that I think I've developed that have kind of helped me with this YouTube channel. First of all, a broad understanding of lots of different financial instruments. And then secondly, the ability to present and break down these financial instruments in a clear and concise manner. Now, it can be really tempting as a creator to lean into scandal and trending topics in order to get the most views. If I put out a video now saying the market's going to crash and I'm going to sell everything, you can guarantee it's going to get a bucket load of views. And a few months ago, anyone pumping any old Bitcoin was getting millions of views off the back of it. I don't think that's a sustainable strategy towards YouTube and it's just not the content I want to make. So yeah, I am going to try and dress my content attractively. But it's my belief that if the content provides enough value, both in terms of the information that's inside it and how it's packaged and if it's engaging and entertaining, then people will click it because they know you're not going to let them down. Now, if that means I end up spending five hours making 10 seconds of footage sometimes, so be it. It was out of respect. Can you trust Damien Talks Money? First of all, DTM is the brand. My name is Damien Paul Jordan. I'm 33 years old. I was born in 1988 in Birmingham, and now I live in the Northwest of England. 
It's lovely to meet you. You can't trust me because you don't know me. But what you can trust is that I'm always gonna deliver you the very best piece of content that I can. That I'm gonna spend my time researching and deliver you a piece of content that is clear and concise and hopefully entertaining along the way. And you can also trust the fact that I respect that behind this lens are real people looking to improve their finances. But you also need to understand that this is now my job. So that ultimately creates a conflict. I have a family that rely on me to feed them. And what was once a desire to make money from YouTube is now essential. That's kind of why I made this video. I didn't want to sit here and make one of those, I quit my job, you can do anything, just follow your dream videos. I think they're a bit self-centered and kind of like, you know, unrelatable. I wanted to lay it all out for you so you could make a decision on if the content I'm making now is the kind of content you want to continue to follow. No. I just needed to address the reality of the situation and put it all out there because on paper, quitting your full-time job to become a YouTuber sounds like the dream, doesn't it? But the truth is, I'm absolutely pooing myself. Quitting my high paid corporate job to make videos in my spare room. I just knew if I didn't do it, I would regret it for the rest of my life. So yeah, here we are. I have no idea if it's gonna work. If anything, the odds are pretty stacked against me. 51 million YouTube channels. And this is my one. Hi guys, I'm Damien. <laughs> Try saying that first time. Is that it? Nothing happened. Whatever it is I do in my spare bedroom every week. Actually earning in the region of 200 quid a day in free shares. So, you know, I ain't earning that much of free. 2E and brown nosing get you so far. If no one likes the videos, I'll stop making them. Thousand people have died. Thousand. 32,000. I have no idea how to feel about all of this. Have you ever, ever felt like this? You just won the prize. Done, you've just won 500 quid. <laughs> Most of you just call me Carol anyway. What is going on? Have you ever actually seen my leg? I can't do it. Just a cheeky little video for everyone today. Thousand subscribers after three months. Go throw some stuff at walls. You owe it to yourself.